Marco. What is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. iPhone SE versus Samsung Galaxy S9 speed test. I'm sure you haven't seen this nowhere on YouTube. Let's go ahead and begin the boot up test in three, two, one and see which one can get there first. Now this video comes based on the request of quite a few subscribers and a lot of people have been saying that, you know, they've broke their phone and stuff and they picked up an SE and they're holding off for a next iteration of a Galaxy. So people kind of go to this phone when they do break a phone or something because it's a good cheap phone backup, the iPhone SE. And you can see the Samsung should be ahead and it is, but not too much ahead of the SE. They're about two seconds for being two years newer there. So the boot up goes to the Samsung easily. And if you're wondering how I got that little slit for the you know SIM card tray, that's from an iPhone 5. Okay, so if you're upgrading from an SE to an S9, your fingerprint will come from the front to the rear and you can see it's right there. And this fingerprint is actually faster. So let's demonstrate this here. So when you hit the fingerprint on the S9, it goes right in. You can't bypass the lock button on the SE to actually get in. So what you have to do is you have to power this thing up first and then you can get in, but even when you're on the lock screen, you're still slower than that of an S9. So the S9 all around is much faster when it comes to the first generation Touch ID on the SE. But one thing I did notice, I did this multiple times, is when you hit the power button, the SE actually shows the clock first. So if you're trying to check the time, you might see it a little faster unless you have always on display enabled for the S9. So three, two, one, and you could see it's just a little bit quicker every time to show that time on the SE. So that's just something small that I noticed. But again, if you have always on display on, well, then that's pretty much doesn't matter for the S9 users. Okay, so before we go further, let's check the battery life. You can see 83% there for the iPhone SE. Let's go ahead and check it here for the S9. And you could see that one's at 79%. So keep that in mind, 80% here, 83% on the SE and 79% on the S9 for when we hit the end of this video, we're gonna recheck the battery. We're going straight through on this test to see which one drains more throughout these tests as well. Okay guys, so we have arrived at the application portion of the speed test. You can see everything is closed out. I have them in cases now because there was a slip fest before I tried this two times before we were here. I'm gonna do commentary because people said they didn't like the music last time. Let's go into calendar. And you can see that's first for the S9 coming home. Let's go into the clock. And you can see first on the S9, let's go into the calculator. And first again on the S9 slightly, let's go into App Store, Play Store. That's the Galaxy S9 coming home. Let's go into Instagram. And that is the Galaxy S9 again. Let's go into Twitter. And we have a win there for the Galaxy S9. Let's go into the weather application. And we slipped again here, even with a case on it. Let's go into weather. And you can see that's the iPhone SE. The Samsung weather is always slower than the iPhone series. Let's go into the Amazon. So if you like to check your weather fast, you might like the iPhone, but the OK Google thing pretty nice for the Galaxy S9. Let's go into eBay and you can see you're shopping first again on the right. Let's go into Appy Geek and you can see Appy Geek opens first there on the left. Got a little notey right here, a little notification, but still it was first on the left. Let's go into Snapchat. Snapchat. Ooh, that was close. You're gonna have to call that one for me down below. YouTube and YouTube opens first on the right. Let's go into Subway Surfers and Wow, the SE just not playing around today. Not playing around for the small boy. Let's go into the Pac-Man. And Pac-Man game, again, what is going on, S9? Four gigs of RAM, twice that of the SE. What are you doing? Snapdragon 845, what are you doing? Okay, so the SE takes down the S9 and both Subway Surfers and Pac-Man. Let's go into Dead Trigger 2. Graphically intensive game, again. Just bump the camera again. iPhone SE taking down the S9. And you can see this is the SE again. And we're still waiting. And now you're playing. The, this is this is disappointing for a flagship from 2018 being taken down in the gaming department from a 2016 model. Let's go into Geekbench and you can see Geekbench maybe slightly to the SC, I think slightly there. Let's go into Internet. Samsung Internet, one of the most popular internet browsers on Android, opens first over the SE and Adobe Clip. And Adobe Premiere Clip on the right over the SE. So it looked like the Galaxy S9 was faster, most of your single core applications, but the SE is still shining in the gaming department. And uh, let's go ahead and run them backwards now just to see if there's any reloads on either multitasking. You could see internet. This is where the four gigs of RAM should help the s9 and going to the dead trigger 
still a little faster to load there on the SC on the multitasking. Let's go into the Pac-Man. Again, I'm going to call that to the SE. What about the Subway Surfers? You can see they both held that one there. YouTube, they both held that one there. We're looking for reloads here. And that was a little slow on the animation there for the S9. A Pi Geek, Appy Geek, about the same. eBay, about the same. Amazon. Looks like the SE has a faster animation when loading up these things. You can see the weather actually holds in the background for the SE where you have to keep reloading it on the Samsung. What about Twitter? And you can see that animation speed for that multitasking is just spot on for the iPhone. So you've seen right there a slight reload for the S9 App Store, Play Store, and Calculator. Now, do keep in mind the S9 is on 1x animations. Let's go into Clock and SE holding it again and Calendar and SE again. So the SE with the 11.3.1, the latest update that's on this phone, still a very fast phone here, even though they're going to update it to an even faster version in the SE2. Now I want to see if those games were actually a fluke because, you know, that was kind of weird to see that the SE was winning basically every gaming round there. So I close out the applications. Let's do this gaming round one more time. And you could see, is it a fluke? No, it's not. The SE again. The SE said, shut up, Nick. Okay, let's go to Pac-Man right now. And let's see what happens. Okay, 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 okay. So the SE's not playing around today. Let's go into Dead Trigger 2. And you could see, again, this is disappointing, Samsung. If you see in this video, Samsung, get it together. Okay, guys, so let's just quickly run a video render here. I did, uh, you know, shoot the same video on both of these devices of my dog really quickly here. And we're just gonna render it out and save the video just to see which one does it faster. Now, usually, sometimes on Android, it takes a while. So if it does take too long, on the Android device. I am just going to skip through it, like speed through this video real quick. So we're just going to save the gallery here, 1080p. And this one's going to go 1080p as well. Three, two, one. And see which one can save the video first. So it looks like the SE is ahead here again over the Galaxy S9, disappointing me once again. But I do know that the iOS version seems to render it a little bit faster. But this is the software that I use on the day to day. So this is a real world experience for me because I actually use Adobe Clip to render out video on a phone. This is my go to for the mobile devices. If I'm not on an iPhone, I do use iMovie over there. But if I'm on an Android, I definitely go here. So this is pretty, pretty bad for the Galaxy S9 losing to the SE on this application. So Adobe developers, you got to get this one together. But, you know, I think that, you know, it's just kind of crazy how this phone is as beating up on the Galaxy S9 in some areas. And you can see, I'm just gonna cancel it out because it's taking too long. But you can see that there, that the iPhone SE was faster in the video render test. All right guys, so you can see the Geekbench scores are in 2478 single core iPhone SE, 2305, 4466, 7762. So in the benchmarks, the SE basically is being matched to the Galaxy S9, a little bit of a higher score there. Um, this might be higher, it's just a little bit hot now because we're running these tests but the multi-core crushing win for the S9. And you know, technically the S9 should be a faster phone, but you can just see the optimizations and you know, the software updates keeping the SE running fluid here means that this phone is still very fast and you can get about five of these for the price of one S9. Now there's no way at all that I'm recommending an SE over S9. It's definitely not the better phone in my opinion, but still you can't deny its power, it's pretty fast. So let's take a look at the battery life. Remember 83% on the SE, it dropped 10% throughout this comparison. So that's a 10% drain. The Galaxy S9 went from 79 to 72, so a 7% drain. So about a 3% difference, which couldn't be a big difference throughout the day. So definitely, the